Hey guys, so today we've got a really fun shootout, one you have been asking for for quite some time. We've got our Tough T, the 2004 Volkswagen Touareg. It's a really good off-roader. It's an old Volkswagen, so it comes with all the baggage an old Volkswagen comes with. But the question is, how does it compare to a more traditional off-road vehicle like the legendary Grand Cherokee WJ? Well, I've got a nice gentleman who drove all the way out here from Kansas. We're gonna find out which is better value and which is more fun and better off-road. And if you wanna own this Jeep, you can over at TFL Bids. More on that later. So John, what year did you buy this Jeep? I bought this in 2011. Okay, so you've had it for 10 years now, and what, what drew you to the Grand Cherokee, and why did you get the WJ? Yeah, it's a good question. So I actually come from a performance car background. I've had a Grand National, I've had uh, LS1, Z28, Fox Body, Notchback, all, that, all the fun stuff you can think of. And uh, my wife and I found out we were having twins. So <laughs> naturally we needed a newer, uh, a newer bigger vehicle. And I've always, my dad always, uh, he had a Toyota pickup truck while I was growing up, an SR5, a 1980 SR5. And we, I remember going off-road with him. And I wanted to have that same, you know, that same, that same feeling, uh, but with a little bit more room, right, with four doors. Uh, and I was looking on the market, you know, and see what was out there. And I, I you know, I've always loved Jeep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, found the Grand Cherokees out there and uh, was impressed with the V8. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. I mean, it's, uh, it's a very, a uh, cool mixture of kind of rugged old school, you know, solid axle tech. And then with the WJ, uh, you've got more luxuries and you got leather and like real climate control and stuff that works. Exactly right. Yes. So do you, did you have to sell your, uh, your, your fun toys, your fast stuff? I did. Okay. Yes. Good sacrifice. But uh, yeah, this, this Jeep has been amazing for 10 years. This is our off-road trail for the day. It's called Cliffhanger 1.0 and it is super steep, although it may not look like it on camera. It's also really loose. It's got a good mixture of ruts and roots and rocks, it's a great test. Seriously, probably like 30 degrees, it's, I mean, it's up there. All right, so here's what's gonna happen. I'm going to tackle this in the ultimate mom car, but actually these Volkswagens are super cool. They have a bunch of really neat tech. So let me go into low range, lock the center differential. That's gonna lock uh, the front and rear drive shaft together at the same speed, and then sure, we'll just lock the rear diff. And let's see what happens. Now this is the Volkswagen with the 4.2 liter V8, right around 300 horsepower or so. Hopefully that'll be enough at, you know, 9,000 feet of elevation. And the first line I'm gonna try is head right toward the route. Let's see uh, how the Volkswagen does in the same spot. Oh, it's gonna try to climb. Okay, well I got wheels spinning, but I'm not going anywhere. Now I do have independent suspension, so I'm not gonna have as much articulation as that Grand Cherokee. Nope. It's just pushing me into the tree. All right, well, uh, let's take the more off-kilter angle. Don't wanna take it with too much speed because that's when you start to break things, but we're gonna see what happens here. So I'm gonna start lifting wheels any second now. All right, now that's where the rear locker really comes into play. Um, and you can feel it. Both rear wheels are spinning at the same speed. It is a true rear locker. So you can feel right about there. That wheel should be in the air. Um, and then it will start to dip into the hole. Now we're two-wheeling it, but it's okay. Just nice, slow, constant momentum. Keeping my foot in it. And you can feel the traction control work too. So it's grabbing the brake of the wheel in the air to force traction to the wheel on the ground. There we go. All right, so that's all it took. But um, yeah, I mean, that's uh, pretty amazing that, that the, the Volkswagen is able to do that. Now the Volkswagen Touareg has actually a pretty secret little hidden feature. If you go into low range and manually select first gear, it actually has hill descent control. Now it's not a selectable button like um, more modern vehicles, but it is a true hill descent that will try to maintain a constant speed. That is a good thing when you're out here on a terrain like this. What was it like to buy? I mean, were there a lot of options out there? How did you find this one? Yeah, um, there, there were a lot of options out there um, in our price range. Um, there, there weren't a whole lot in good condition. 
Yeah. Um, so we were kind of worried about what we were finding on the market at that time. But then we found this uh, actually in Missouri, uh, one owner, um, and they took really good care of it. Uh, yeah, and we just, we kept it, you know, we purchased it and we kind of, ke you know, kept up with that tradition. So talk to me kind of about what you did to it. So obviously it's got wheels, tires, lift. What did you end up doing with it? Yeah, so I put on a four inch zone short arm uh, lift kit on there. Uh, since it does have the V8, I also added three quarter spacers up front to level out the ride. As far as wheels, these are uh, stock JK um, uh, Moab wheels. Yeah. I, I, I've always loved the style, it's just simple five star. Uh, then I, I got these 32 inch uh, KM3 uh, on there, which have been really great off road, really grippy. Did these have skid plates underneath them? Were they any protection at all? Yes, uh, oh. the Limited comes with a uh, front skid plate under the transfer case and in the back for the gas tank. So I know, and, and you're going to have to be the teacher on this one because I don't know it that well, but there were a few different like four wheel drive systems Correct. on the Grand Cherokee. So which one does this one have and how does it work? Yeah, so this one has the Quadra Track 2. Okay. Uh, so what it does is it's full time four wheel drive. And what that means is, you know, when you're just driving regularly, it uh, is always in rear wheel drive. When it detects slippage, it tr starts transferring power up front. Interesting. Really interesting. Okay, so there's not, not like a two high mode. It's like four auto. Correct. And then is there also four high that you can like manually engage? No, I can manually engage four low though. Interesting. Okay. So this one originally wouldn't have had a locker in it, but you just went ahead and changed that, right? That's correct. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to see how different it would perform with a locker. Uh, so I just um, got a uh, Aussie uh, Lunchbox locker installed recently. Yes. Nice. That's awesome. So John has a front sway bar disconnects quick disconnects. Look at that. So what this does is it allows some extra articulation in the front end, which should be beneficial when he heads into those big pits. So that's John and his buddies. They have that Forerunner. I think they're a little nervous because they're from Kansas, but um, I think they're going to be shocked by how well their rigs do out here. That's the goal. All right. So this looks a lot more steep in person. I'm glad you're here uh, guiding me, man. Dude, that was amazing. That was crazy. I, I had no idea it was gonna climb up that, yeah. that easy. <laughs> oh man, I mean, it just goes to show that, you know, the mud terrains, the, uh, the, the weight difference compared to the Volkswagen, the, uh, the lift, the locker, I mean, it all just came together. And that was probably one of the best results I've ever seen up that hill. I mean, there wasn't a tire put wrong. There wasn't a tire in the air. That sway bar disconnect worked great at the top. Dude, that was killer. How much do you think you have in this total? Uh, about $3,000 with the lift, tires, the locker, uh, the disconnect and the sway bar. So honestly, you can get a lot of bang for your buck in one of these WJs. Easy. Yeah, for sure. So what have you liked about it over the last 10 years? What's your favorite part of it? I would have to say what I, I have enjoyed the most out of this vehicle is what has been surprising is the reliability. It has never left me stranded in 10 years. Um, probably the second thing is just the V8 exhaust note coming from you know performance car background. Uh, it's just, he has more bark than bite, but I just love hearing it echoing off the mountains, you know, off the rocks. If you're in Moab, you just hear it echoing. It's just, it just sounds right. <laughs> What's the, um, uh, what's the mileage on this guy? It has 220,000 original miles on it. 220, and you haven't had any reliability issues? Not one. What no. works and what doesn't work? Everything works. Wow. Everything. It's, it's mind-boggling. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. And that's, I think, one of the, the kind of like the little-known things in the automotive world is like people think you have to buy the Forerunner or the Xterra to be reliable. But these, these whole Jeeps, they last a freaking long time yeah, without, cool. without major issues. My dude, that was awesome. I appreciate it. That was, it was a good time. That was really, really cool. Now, we've seen what the Volkswagen can do off-road. It's very good for what it is. It'll do 140 on the Autobahn. But, I mean, that Jeep is just... You don't have to spend a ton of money to have an incredible rig out on the trail. I've always been a little skeptical of lunchbox lockers, but after seeing what it can do up the hill, you know, a good set of mud terrains, a locker, a slight lift, and a WJ Grand Cherokee. I mean, it'll go 99% of places, I think, 
a Forerunner TOD Pro will go, Wrangler, even Wrangler Rubicon. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's an impressive rig, and this is a tough hill. So, good work uh, on that, buddy. That was awesome. Well, thank you. I appreciate you guiding me up the hill. Yeah, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. And if you want to be the owner of this very Jeep that just whooped the Tourag's ass, check out tflbids.com. We'll leave a link in the description below where you can go ahead and bid on it. I have to hold my head in shame on this one. That was, uh, that was impressive. Got to get some upgrades on this guy now.